Hello. <laughs> uh, well, my name is Gustavo, and well, I'm going to talk about a, a project I I started uh, three four months ago. Um, well, this is uh, this is this has to do with uh, the Coverity tool, and uh, well, this work is being supported by the Linux Foundation uh, Core Infrastructure Initiative, and well. Okay, well, this is the, the overview. Uh, my intention is to, um, to show you and to talk to you about um, what I am doing to, uh, to get involved in the Linux community and uh, the process I am following to, to do the work I am doing and uh, the response uh, my work, uh, the response from the community so far and, uh, and well, the future of, uh, of this project. And, well, uh, Coverity is, uh, is an static code analyzer. Um, we all here know more or less what a static code analyzer does. So, um, well, it basically performs analysis uh, without having to, to, to run the code, right? So, um, um, this is uh, the, the interface uh, of this tool. Um, I'm not going to, to walk you through all the details of the interface. This is merely to, uh, to, to show you how the interface looks like, right? So, well, uh, here, here uh, you can see some uh, categories of, uh, of issues. And, um, and, well, this is about uh, uh, a null pointer the reference. But it's just, this is just how the tool looks like. Okay, well, um, this tool uh, reports uh, a lot of issues. Um, as, uh, right now, I guess, uh, the number of issues reported are around uh, 6,000. And, um, and well, uh, it also classified the issues into um, high impact issues, uh, medium impact issues. And, well, regarding the high impact issues, uh, the last time I ran it, uh, it reported more than 200 illegal memory accesses. So there in the slide you can see um, uh, the different categories of high impact issues. And um, well, uh, in this slide uh, you can see the type of issues that fall into this uh, category. And uh, well, the use after free, uh, uh, out of bounds access, um, and well, here, um, okay, the, the median impact issues, uh, the two reported more than 300 null pointer references in the Linux kernel. So, um, well. okay, so now what I'm going to do is to walk you through some examples of the issues I, I've solved so far, I, I managed to resolve so far. So um, I'm going to, uh, I selected like a, a, a variety of issues, and um, I'm going to try to explain you uh, how, I, uh, how I communicate with the community and how I get uh, some responses from the maintainers and how I manage to come up with a solution for, for these issues, right? So, okay. Well, the first one is um, Coveti reported a missing break in, uh, in switch in this uh, piece of code. So here uh, in, the highlighted, in the highlighted code, you can see, uh, well, that uh, the, the case is not uh, terminated uh, neither by a break nor by a continue, as is in the case below with the default, uh, for the default case. And, uh, and well, something strange uh, is happening there, right? So, okay. Um, actually, the solution turned out to be uh, a continue. So how, how could I come up with this uh, solution? Well. The first thing I, I had to do was to, to, to read the code, right? So try to understand what the code was doing. And um, as I couldn't decide exactly if, uh, if it was a missing break or maybe it, was, uh, it just needed a fall through comment as you can see in the, in the case below, uh, well, I had, to, I had to ask some questions in the, in the mailing list. So, well, the maintainer was uh, nice to, to to tell me that, uh, well, what was missing was a, was a continue, right? So this was the fix. And um, something important here in the communication was that uh, 
At some point, the maintainer also uh, pointed me out to, uh, to a piece of code that could be improved. So um, uh, what, I, what I did was to, to send another patch. So uh, the, the Kubernetes tool first reported a missing break. And I sent a patch to fix it, uh, adding a, a continue. And I sent another patch to refactor some, some code. So because there was some room for, for improvement, right? But um, it could have be ended just like, uh, um, I mean, I just could have sent the first patch and leave it at that, right? But uh, this was a, a very nice uh, a fix for me to do because uh, the maintainer uh, suggested this fix. So we went through some iterations and, uh, and finally this, this patch uh, was accepted upstream. And, um, it was one of the one of my very first uh, fixes in, in this project. And, well, another example uh, is uh, is this. Uh, well, Kubernetes reported um, that uh, the arguments when calling this function was in the wrong order. So here we can see the first piece. The first piece of code is a is a function call. So um, what is going on there is that the the SID uh, that is uh, commonly uh, is the source ID, and the second argument is the destination ID. Uh, Kubernetes reported that something something weird was going on there. So what I did was to check the the, the function prototype, and if you notice in the highlighted code, uh, the function prototype uh, first expects to to uh, to receive the destination ID. And the second argument uh, is the, the source ID. So, so yeah, it actually turned out to be a, an issue. And, uh, and well, I, I sent a fix, and it was applied, and everyone was happy. And well, this is uh, another example. Uh, well, the report here was uh, that um, there was a variable inside the function. You, you can see there the highlighted code uh, below, uh, there is this function called to FC sequence else uh, response send function, right? So inside this function, uh, there was a variable that was being used without a previous initialization, right? So, okay, something that you can notice immediately is that the, the reason field of, the, of this structure, the RJT data structure, is, um, um, well, a value is being assigned to this field twice, right? So um, uh, what I did was to first take that, took a look into the, into the function definition, in the, into the structure definition, and what I found is that this structure only has uh, two fields, right? Reason and explain. So the next thing I did was to take a look into the, into the function, right? So, so yeah. I found out that, uh, yeah, actually, this explain uh, field of this structure was being used in, uh, in, in the previous code. Um, we were not uh, assigning any value to, to this field, right? So, well, I continued looking into this, and, well, the, the next thing that I did was to, uh, to look for all the uh, references to, to this uh, constant. If you notice, in the highlighted code, uh, this, uh, this constant is being assigned to, to the reason field. And, uh, well, it's, it was almost obvious that uh, maybe uh, the idea of the, of the original intention was to assign this constant to the explain field instead of the reason one. So, well, anyway, I did my research and, um, and well, I found uh, all this reference to this constant in the same file. So what I did was took a look uh, into all the references uh, to this uh, constant and, well, I found that the same pattern um, appeared in, in all cases, so, so yeah, actually, that was the, the right solution, right? So I sent a patch, it was applied, and, um, and yeah, it turned out to be a, a copy-paste error. I'm sorry, this, this is wrong. It's, uh, it's a copy-paste error. And well, the next example is, uh, is again, 
the Coverity 2 reported a missing break in, in Switch. So, okay, this, this is a very trivial uh, fix. It is, well, it's actually not a fix because it's not a functionality uh, issue, right? But uh, something I want you to notice here is that, uh, uh, well, it's important to, to, to document the code, right? So, because at the end, it's not, uh, it's not your code, it's our code. And, uh, well, it could, it could in, in my case, it could have saved me a lot of time uh, just immediately noticing that uh, it was a false positive and, and it was obvious that uh, the code had to fall through. And, and yeah, well, uh, this issue was first, first detected, uh, well, the last year, but uh, well, that's not that important. Oh, question. Oh, well. <laughs> I think, doesn't uh, the current GCC uh, warn about f fall through? If you, if you don't put a comment there, so that does, uh, that would fix a warning. GCC? I'm, I think it does. Yeah, it's it's a recent there? version. Yeah. Okay, take a note of that. Okay, so, well, the next example is, uh, oh, what's going on? Uh, okay, yeah. Okay, well, this is, this is uh, actually pretty common in the, in the kernel. Um, well, this is a, a null pointer. Um, well, actually what is going on here is that uh, this, uh, do you notice that uh, function, that call to the function SPI get driver data? So what happens here is that inside that function, the SPI pointer is being referenced. So, uh, but uh, the problem is that uh, at line 13, there is a null check. So um, the pointer is being, uh, um, this is uh, uh, the reference of this pointer before uh, this null check at line uh, 13. So, well, the solution was, was simple. Uh, the thing here is that uh, doing some research, I ran into an interesting article, and, uh, and well, uh, that's actually the title of the article. I recommend you to, to take a look into this. And, uh, and well, this was uh, an issue uh, reported in 2009 that actually, um, um, this issue uh, was there, yeah, was, was, was a very similar case and the, uh, the exploiter, the, the attacker can, could get access to, to root, right, by exploiting this, this issue. So, so yeah, it is important to, to at least do some research every time we, we find this kind of, uh, of uh, a null pointer the references, so a potential null pointer the references. Uh, well, okay, this is uh, another one. Well, this fix uh, was more complex, so it required uh, almost a complete refactoring of, of the function of this, uh, of this DMA chain function. And, um, and yeah, well, the thing here was also uh, related to uh, the reference in uh, null pointers, right? So, Okay, this issue was there since 2013, and well, is now fixed. Um, okay, this is, um, uh, this is the last example. So here, okay, the, the Kubernetes 2 reported that uh, there was some duplicated code uh, for different branches. So if you notice here, we have a, an if else statement. So, um, so yeah. Previous to this fix, uh, the function call was exactly the same for the if and for the else statement, right? So with exactly, uh, passing exactly the same arguments to, the, to the exactly the same function. So if you notice the change is, uh, is kind of subtle, there is, a, there is a, a subtle difference in the function names. So instead of, ha of calling to the source function, we had to call to the destination function. So uh, what I did here is to ask to the maintainer, um, 
But first, what I did actually was to send a patch. I proposed a patch that this patch, what was doing was to just getting rid of the if else statement and leaving uh, alone the, the call to, to the source function, right? So I was just getting rid of the duplicated code in, in that case of the unnecessary if and else statements. But uh, I also added a, a comment in my patch asking, uh, um, saying, well, you know, uh, I found this issue, and, uh, but uh, chances are that this, is, that this could be a copy-paste error, so please uh, help me to, to verify this. And, and yeah, well, the maintainer replied saying that, that uh, actually that was a bug and, and that was the, the, the right solution. And, and well, it was, was nice. Okay, uh, during these examples, uh, a key point, something, something to notice is that um, a key part in every fix uh, is uh, the communication, right? The communication with the maintainers. But uh, it is also important to, uh, to show them, uh, or has been important for me to show them that, that I've been doing my research and that I've been uh, trying to understand the code and uh, so I can come up with uh, proposing some patches and asking some questions at, at the same time. So this is actually part of my workflow. Uh, first, well, uh, and well, this is some tips for, for newcomers um, that uh, it is important to, to review the code around the issue. It could be obvious, but uh, well, some, a, lot of, a lot of the times it is not that obvious for, for, for a lot of people. But uh, after, reading, after reading the code, uh, we had to read again, to review it, and just in case of doubt, but uh, just after doing some research, ask specific questions to, to the maintainers, right? So, so yeah, uh, as I already said, uh, sometimes it is good to ask questions with a, with a patch, right? So saying, okay, you know, uh, this is my understanding of the code so far, so uh, this is, uh, I am proposing the solution, uh, but I'm not completely sure this is the right solution because there can be some subtle issues like a copy-paste error so, so well, here you go, and uh, and sometimes it happens that that's the right solution. But in other cases, uh, the solution is uh, slightly different. Uh, well, something important and something that I've been doing is to taking note of similar cases during all the work uh, I've been doing. So every time I run into a similar case, uh, I already have like a, a previous experience and some notes that. Uh, for sure, they're, they are going to help me somehow to, to, to come up with a, with a, with a solution uh, quickly or, or just to understand better the code. And, um, and well, <laughs> the last point. Uh, this is, uh, sometimes it's been frustrating because it requires a lot of time. Uh, it requires to, to, to read the code that uh, I, 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 I am starting to, to understand. Uh, because I, I am a newcomer, right? I've been working on this uh, for, for a few months. And, uh, but it's been helpful for me to, to read uh, books uh, on the software security uh, topic. And um, I found this, actually I found this in, in, this, in this book. Uh, it was, it says something like, uh, okay, well, you know, when you are doing this type of work, it can be mentally taxing. And uh, yeah, well, I, I related. Uh, I relate completely to, to that uh, to that phrase. And okay, well, the the problems I found so far is that uh, uh, this tool, Coverity, reports a lot of false positives. So my plan is to uh, to use Coxinel to identify the, as much false positives as possible, and of course uh, continue fixing as much uh, issues and bugs as possible. Um, I have to say that uh, some of these uh, issues have been applied to, to a stable uh, trees of the Linux kernel, so those have been uh, like actual bugs, right? And, um, okay, well, now, my contribution so far, uh, so far I managed to, to contribute uh, more than 200 patches in three months, so, so it's, it's cool, it's nice for me. <laughs> 
Um, okay, these patches have uh, fixed uh, um, issues in seven different categories. Uh, I've sold uh, 20 different types of issues and 26 components in the Linux kernel have been impacted by, by this work. And, well, I'm not making up these numbers. Uh, anyone can verify those numbers there. And um, that's it. Thank you. So I know we have time for some questions or... Any questions? Thank you. Where's the mic? Um, a few slides further back, uh, there was something with an set SPI driver. There? Can you go back to a few slides? Another one? Another one? <laughs> this one. Um, wh what was the solution in this particular case? You're adding Oh, yeah, well, let me show you. Yeah, here's the problem. Um, so they reported that this, uh, this is a function, SPI is a function, right? So this is a microphone. Okay, okay. The uh, uh, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> So in this particular case, uh, it seems to me that you're adding, you're moving the SPI get driver data further down. Uh, probably there's a null pointer check uh, in between. And uh, usually, uh, I think this patch looks a bit fishy to me because usually uh, when SPI get driver data um, returns null, um, you, you have, you're missing an SPI set driver data somewhere else. So uh, I'm, I'm not sure if this patch is actually correct. Okay. Yeah, the, the thing here is that um, I was focused on uh, the SPI pointer, right? So here is uh, a null check uh, after uh, after calling this function, and what happened inside this function is that this pointer, there was a, it, it was being the reference, right? This SPI pointer inside this function. So. It doesn't matter whether the setup code which missed the setup code which is not there. If you have defensive matters in the code, they should be at the right place. So if you have you get a pointer, then you dereference it, and then you check it for null. That's completely wrong, independent whether it should be null or not. So, and th that he was fixing. So it's not, it's, and, uh, and I think the patch is entirely correct from that point of view. Okay, sorry, not, but, uh, so, uh, yeah, but that doesn't, I mean, that doesn't matter. If there is a null pointer check, it should be in the right place. So, uh, and, and looking at that, that's stuff which you can detect with static, uh, with static code analysis very well. And so you should fix it. Because that's, at some point it just explodes in your face and you don't know why. Because it might be not dear or whatever it is, is protecting at that point. So you better have it in the right place then. If you, or entirely sure that this pointer can never be null, remove it. So that's the, uh, that's the other way to do it. But then make it sure. <laughs> yeah, no, actually, I, I've had uh, the, the same discussion with some maintainers that they say exactly the same, that, okay, this, this pointer can never be null at that point. So some of them uh, have suggested, okay, you can remove it. So mm, this is a false positive. It can never happen, but uh, you can remove it, right? And, but in other cases, uh, like this, well, the patch is accepted. It's correct.
Yeah. <laughs> So, so you can get null pointers in the kernel for various different reasons, but the question is, can you do something about it? If you can do nothing about it, it's usually better just to let the kernel oops and have the message reported and see if you can fix whatever bug caused it. Only if you can ac actually think it, A, might be null, and B, you can do something about it at this point should you have a null check. Actually, this same discussion, you can find the same discussion yeah. reading that article. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So the the, the comments is the same. This issue is, they, they use some, something about the personality where dereferencing zero doesn't oops. And so you can keep going and, and you have a, and you can exploit the kernel. No. Uh, so it, it used to be that, that, that user land could map something at zero. And so it didn't, oops. There's no. A, there's a personality thing with sysv compatibility stuff. And unless, unless the kernel has its own user space, which is maybe true on Spark, I think, but is not true in general, you can just use straight I, I, I have to go. zero, and it'll be <laughs> user space zero. Same thing. Okay, well, thank you. Thanks again. Thanks. <laughs>